Hello friends, welcome to video series on geography. My name is Manjanath. I run this blog poormansfriend.org and the YouTube channel poormansfriend with an aim to help UPSC aspirants in their preparation process. Previously I have done a video on how to study for geography. I have explained about books, what kind of topics to study and what to exclude and I have explained the nature of questions that are asked in the exam. In this video, I'll be explaining about topics like universe, star formation, and then solar system. All these topics come under astronomy. So this is a low yield topic, that is the cost to benefit ratio is too low. So you can reserve this topic for future preparation, that is once you complete all the easier topics, then you can go for these kind of topics where the weightage is too low. But this concept that is nebula theory of Laplace is somewhat important. So to explain this we need to know about star formation and universe and also there are a few multiple choice questions asked from these sections. I'll not go in depth, I'll just give some basics. It, it is a topic which is closely related to science so it would be hard for humanities students to understand. I've tried to make, keep it as simple as possible but in case if you don't understand this topic just you can leave it because it is not a high yield topic. So coming to topic, so what is universe? Universe is all that matter we see around us. It includes stars, planets and then space between these planets etc. So galaxies are the major building blocks of the universe. There are about few billion galaxies in the universe with each galaxy having few billion stars. And the age of the universe is said to be about 13.8 billion years, that is the universe came into existence about nearly about 13.8 billion years ago after an event called as Big Bang. This term Big Bang is important once. So what is this Big Bang event? Big Bang event is the prevailing cosmological model that explains the existence or the evolution of universe. According to this theory, universe is a small point. In the beginning the universe was a small point with high amount of energy where it occupied least amount of space that is it was just a point source with an energy of about 10 to the power 37 degrees 32 degrees Celsius. This is extremely huge amount of energy and soon after the Big Bang event there was an inflation in the universe so the word inflation is important. So inflation simply means that the universe expanded in, in size that is in volume and the temperature started falling. So it took only about very small amount of time. You can imagine 10 to the power minus 43 or 10 to the power minus 32 seconds. These are very small quantity of time. So we not we not we need not remember this uh, time uh, scale or uh, any important temperature lists etc. We only need to know about these important terms like inflation. So after the inflation, the temperature fall, fell significantly from 10 to the power 32 degrees Celsius to 10 to the power 27 degrees Celsius. And it, at this time, the universe was very hot and there, were, there was formation of electrons and quarks. So quarks are fundamental particles of universe which are tinier than protons, neutrons and electrons. So they are fundamental to the formation of basic subatomic particles. After the quark, quarks were formed and after a time span of 3 minutes after the Big Bang event, the universe gave rise to few subatomic particles or the main subatomic particles like electrons electrons were previously created but other particles like protons and neutrons came into existence once these particle came particles came into existence the temperature started falling significantly at this time the temperature was still considerably high that light could not escape and there was no shiny shining or light in universe universe was still dark but after 3 lakh years the first light emerged, it is called as cosmic microwave background. At this stage, the electrons combined with protons and neutrons to form atoms. You know that atom has a dense nucleus with protons and neutrons in it, surrounded by a shells of electrons where electrons keep on revolving around this nucleus or they are. So this is the structure of atom. So atoms were born and after a few billion years, these atoms started 
coalescing or combining under the influence of gravity and this coalescence of atoms gave rise to small clumps of matter which further gave rise to galaxies and in the end there were billions of galaxies and after 15 billion years it is said that galaxies would start a stop uh, galaxies would uh, start converging and this event is important this event coincides with the first death of stars so usually a star has a lifespan of about 10 to 15 degrees uh, 10 to 15 billion years so at present there is no significant death of stars as universe is only about 13.8 billion years so after 15 billion years there will be significant death of stars and the universe starts converging and then they will start an event called big crunch big crunch is an exact opposite of big bang in big bang we we know that there is expansion of universe that is universe ex is expanding from a single point source it has given rise to galaxies and the space between galaxies is increasing day by day that is universe is expanding in all dimensions whereas in big cr big crunch what we see is there is convergence of galaxies that is galaxies comes come close to each other and exact reverse process reverse process of big bang happens where the world will collapse into a single point source of very high energy and this event is called as big crunch so we have talked about cosmic microwave background cosmic microwave background is the oldest light in universe it formed after 3 lakh years after the event of big bang this event this light is significant for a few reasons one it proves the existence of big bang theory and also it explains the expansion of universe so this is a very faint light which is observed in all directions and it is very significant in observational cosmology or the study of universe it proves two things as i've already said one is expansion of universe other thing is uh, the existence of big bang theory so there is one more important concept called as redshift and blue shift this theory is important in explaining the expanding universe we know that in a rainbow there are seven colors named the V, I, B, J, Y, O, R. The white light that we receive from sun is usually a combination of these few colors. And let us see what is the importance of this Vibhgaya concept. We know that red has greater wavelength, that is why it is placed in the end. V has the shortest amount of wavelength, that is violet has the shortest amount of wavelength. Coming to blue has significantly smaller amount of wavelength compared to, smaller wavelength compared to red. So, how is this concept important? When an object moves far far away, then it moves from blue end of the spectrum towards the red end of the spectrum. As a result, it starts appearing, the red part of the electromagnetic spectrum will be visible to our eyes. Whereas when, it, when the object moves closer to us, then the object shifts from blue end of the spectrum, sorry, red end of the spectrum to blue end of the spectrum, and hence the object starts appearing in blue color. So, this basic concept is important in explaining the expansion of universe this is because a star which appeared blue for a certain amount of time suddenly starts uh, shifting towards red color which simply means that it is moving away from the observer so this is important in exp explaining expansion of universe and edward hubble is a scientist who first explained this theory of blue shift and red shift so Edward, this Hubble Space Telescope is always in use because it revolves around the Earth in lower Earth orbit. This is important. It is placed in lower Earth orbit, about 300 kilometers above the Earth's surface. And this telescope keeps on taking pictures of the entire visible length of universe, which is and these pictures give a great information about the universe. And this telescope the name of the telescope keeps appearing in newspapers so this will be an important topic for prelims and then let us look at stellar evolution or formation of stars till now we have seen what is big bang now we'll see what is stellar evolution so soon after the big bang event there was coalescence of atoms which gave rise to huge clump of gases called nebula nebula is a cloud of dust and gases when triggered or when there is an external force which triggers the formation of gravity then the atom starts coalescing further and this coalescence of atoms gives rise to stars 
So in the event there are many stages of star formation, we'll look at each stage one by one. So in the first stage, we have seen that ne nebula there is coalescence of atoms in nebula and this coalescence of atoms gives rise to stars. So this is nebula is the birthplace of stars. And the main gases of nebula are hydrogen and helium gases. This is because during the coalescence or during the formation of atoms, the first few atoms which were formed in huge numbers were hydrogen and helium atoms. So the universe is abundant with hydrogen and helium atoms. In the next stage, the stage is called as protostar. It is an intermediate state between the main sequence star and the nebula. At this stage, the star will coalesce and will be will form into a big, uh, sh uh, b huge mass in the shape of a planet or a near equal to star, but it doesn't have enough energy to start nuclear fusion. So what is nuclear fusion? Nuclear fusion is a process in which an atom of hydrogen would two atoms of hydrogen will combine to give rise to an ad atom of helium and in this process there is huge amount of energy released so energy is the resultant so nuclear fusion results in fusion results in huge amount of release of energy and this energy is important in driving a star so an exact opposite thing called as nuclear fusion is also there nuclear fusion is also called as atomic fusion where atoms of two or elements sorry an atom splits into two nucleus or two parts giving rise to huge amount of energy and this is called nuclear fission and in stars what we see is nuclear fusion that is nuclear fusion f u s s i o n fusion so for a fusion process to take place it initially needs huge amount of temperature whereas for fission process you don't need initial temperature all that you need is a neutron which can ignite nuclear fission but in fusion you need huge amount of initial temperature st to start the fusion process or uh, splitting a uh, com combination of fusion of two atoms. So in the initial stages when there was a star formation there was no sufficient energy for nu nu nuclear fusion to take place as a result the star didn't emit significant amount of light. At this stage the star is called as protostar and once this stage is crossed the next stage is titori star and in this stage the star has just begun to fuse hydrogen atoms into helium at the core and there is significant amount of release of heat but still it is not th th that significant for the star to appear like a star like sun. So in the next stage we see it is a main sequence star just like sun. Sun at present is a main sequence star. At this stage there is great amount of nuclear fusion process so at the core so there is greater amount of release of energy and the star looks very bright in the next stage we see the stage of a red giant where a star which is fusing hydrogen into helium will consume all the hydrogen and only helium is left at this stage helium starts fusing with which increases temperature of the star due to this increase in temperature the size of the star increases so let us see what on what factors that the size of a star depend. Initially there are two factors which influence the size of a star. One is gravitation, other one is heat energy. So gravitation is something which pulls the star's mass towards the center whereas the heat energy creates pressure which keeps on putting pressure so that the, uh, the mass moves away from the center. And there is a balance between these two forces which result in an equilibrium and there will be a certain size of the star. And in this case, once the fusion of hydrogen is exhausted or complete, there is fusion of helium and during this stage the amount of energy release is too high. As a result, the heat takes an upper hand and the pressure is increased as a result the size of the star grows significantly. So, so the fusion of helium releases more amount of energy compared to fusion of hydrogen. So the size of the star increases significantly and at this stage it is called as red giant. And at the core there is accumulation of carbon because helium atoms fuse to form carbon atoms just like two hydrogen atoms fuse to form helium. Two helium atoms fuse to give rise to carbon. As a result there is a dense carbon core which is formed at the center and once the fusion of helium is complete then the energy that is supplied by heat is 
uh, is completely exhausted as a result the outer parts will escape through uh, to space and the inner part the dense carbon core remains that is it is still tough and it remains and this dense carbon core with escaping gases is called as planetary nebula so it is a stage after red giant usually in star formation there are two kinds of star which are formed one is a small star other one is a large star these two stars have a different life cycle for example in a small star it reaches a red giant stage in a large star it reaches a red super giant stage that is its size size is too so huge that it is quite large compared to the red giant usually our sun will move from star to a red giant stage because it is a small star whereas other huge stars sees uh, sees a different stage called as red super giant stage so at this red super giant stage the stars starts the star starts combining lot of elements and give give rise to iron which is very dense and heavy so it starts accumulating at the center at this stage once the fusion of helium and other elements is complete the star has huge amount of pressure at the center and at certain that um, great amount of pressure there is huge amount of energy released and the star will undergo a, a death called as supernova event so supernova is the death of star even supernova releases a lot of dust and gases into space and this dust and gases are important in formation of new stars so this cycle repeats just like in planetary nebula we have seen that some gases escape to space and these gases repeats this cycle of formation of stars and after the sun explodes into supernova i mean after the star explodes there are two kinds of two different things that happen one is the formation of neutron star and the other one is formation of uh black hole also black hole is the most densest object in the universe which can even attract light or we can even deviate the path of light or sometimes it can completely consume light whereas a neutron star is a star it is also called as degenerate matter because in a neutron star electrons and protons combine and fall to the nucleus giving rise to giving rise to a neutron star at this stage the size of the star is significantly reduced whereas density is significantly increased so a neutron star would be so heavy that even a spoon full of neutron star element would be equal would weigh some thousands of tons likewise in the small star life cycle we see that after the formation of planetary nebula and after the escaping of all these gases outside gases there will be a stage called white dwarf white dwarf is nothing but dense carbon core with all the gases lost so it's it will still have some luminosity because of uh, the existent uh, temperature which which is which is brought from this stage so it is still comparatively hot and emit some light but after this stage after the total exhaustion of energy the white dwarf will move will move to a stage called as brown dwarf at this stage the star completely loses its luminosity and appear and appears as a black dwarf it's not a brown dwarf it is black dwarf so in other case we have seen it will be a neutron star or a black hole so we have talked about red giant stage then we see there is a planetary nebula from small star and then there is an event called supernova it is in the case of a big star you can study these points and then nova is another important event so this is the process a second way in which a red giant super red giant gets converted into a supernova usually when a star when a super giant approaches a younger star it pulls away pulls into it the hydrogen and helium mass present in the new newer star as a result all this hydrogen and helium atoms starts to fuse at the core of the super giant and it will lead to a sudden explosion this is also a supernova event and this event of binary stars giving rise to a supernova is called as nova so we have seen what is a white dwarf sun will lead sun after its death will become a white dwarf so black dwarf black dwarf is what we see after white dwarf loses all its luminosity so at this stage there is no formation of black dwarf because universe is only about 13.8 billion years old and for the formation of black dwarf it usually takes about 15 billion years so it is st strictly a theoretical concept but still in prelims certain questions were asked on this concept 
So what is a brown dwarf? Usually when there is coalescence of atoms, they will give rise to stars. But when there is little mass and there will be no sufficient amount of energy to ignite nuclear fusion, then the star won't be luminous or it won't emit light and will remain like a planet just like uh, other uh, solar system planets. So these kind of planets with no light but still bigger than a planet are called as brown dwarfs. So they, they don't have enough energy to initiate nuclear fusion. I have told that nuclear fusion requires a lot of energy to start and usually the energy is obtained by, from the gravitational force. As gravity pulls matter towards the center, it creates huge amount, huge amount of pressure and then leading to huge amount of temperature. And this temperature is made used in the form of a, to ignite nuclear fusion. But as the star is not significant in, significantly in size, the pressure at the center is not significant enough to start a nuclear fusion. So this star will remain as a brown dwarf. So we have seen what is a neutron star. Neutron star has dense uh, is a very dense star formed by cancellation of electrons and neutrons. So black holes are the densest objects. They are the most mysterious objects in the universe. What exactly happens after black hole sucks a lot of matter is not known. So to easily remember these concepts, it is important to compare these kind of comparisons. So protostar is a fetal stage. It doesn't have exact uh, proper shape. Still, it is in the existence or uh, evolutionary process. And then we we see in the fusion process, it will be just it will be a titauri star where it is it has just begun to start fusion process and this stage is compared to a small kid and then the main sequence star a 20 to 30 year old man and then a red giant is, is like a middle age very close to death and then white dwarf is just before death so there are billion hundreds of 100 billion galaxies in universe so each galaxy has about 100 billion stars and the galaxy in which sun is present is called a milky way and Milky Way is a galaxy which is a type of spiral galaxy. Again, there are three types of galaxies, elliptical, irregular and spiral. The sun is present in a Milky Way galaxy which is spiral in shape. Usually this galaxy is in disk shape. That is, if you look from horizontal view, it would appear like a disk. And at the center is about 1 lakh light years away. And at the edges, it is about 500 light years away that is one light year is equal to the distance traveled by light so what is a light year light year is nothing but the distance traveled by light in one year we know that light travels at a speed of 3 to 3 into 10 to the power 8 meters per second and with this speed if the light keeps on traveling for few years then it would reach certain distance and this distance would be equal to one light year that is the distance traveled by light in one year is one light year so you can imagine how big the universe is if the galaxy itself is few light years across the sun, so the sun is at a distance of one third from the center usually it is, the diameter is about one lakh light years whereas the sun is at a distance of 30, 33,000 light years that is one third the distance from center. So in the next topic we'll see about solar system. The first important topic is the nebula theory of Laplace.